All right, so now that we know about intercepts, let's use them to our advantage. We're still going to be doing some point plotting. All right, let's make sure we understand how to use a graphing technique that works all the time. But I'm going to try to speed things up a little bit by using my intercepts. So 2x plus 3y equals 6. What's the graph? What are the solutions to this equation? And I'll organize myself in a table of data. And we'll start by finding the x-intercept. Right? Where does this graph cross the x-axis? Well, what we saw in the last video is the way I find these is I let y equal to 0. So when I plug that into the equation, right, anything times 0 is 0. So we're basically looking at 2x equals 6. Do a quick division, and we get x equals 3. So I've generated a solution point, 3, 0. Not any old solution point. This is the point where this graph will be crossing the x-axis. And you can see that really speeds things up a little bit because the 0 makes things go away, and we're just really a division away. What about a y-intercept? Well, by definition, what we found, to get a y-intercept, x has to be 0. So if I plug that into the equation, Right, anything times 0 is gone, so we basically are left with 3y equals 6. Divide both sides by 3, and we get y equals to 2. And so I've just generated another, oops, I've just generated another solution point. The, not any old solution point, this is where this graph, right, crosses the y axis. And uh, I will always be asking for a third point when you're point plotting. Again, the goal is if I can line up three points, I'm probably right. So we just basically have to find a third point. And unfortunately, we've exhausted the intercept, so we'd have to use whatever we want to our advantage. So maybe I let x equal negative 2. Right? And so by putting that in there, right, we get negative 4 plus 3y equals 6. We add 4 to both sides. We get 3y equals 10. Divide both sides by 3, and we get 10 thirds, or 3 and a third. So again, it's not the greatest point, but as I mentioned, fractions are numbers too. And so that's our data point that we get. So plotting these three points, where's the rest of the solutions? Right? We found three of them. We know there's an infinite number. Well, that's where the graphing kicks in. So I'll create a nice looking little grid. So there's my y-axis, and here's my x-axis. My x-intercepts occurring at 3, 0. My y-intercepts occurring at 0, 2. Right? And then my other data point, when x is negative 2, the corresponding y-value is 3 and about a third. It took us about right there. All right? And I'm pretty confident that my work is right because the points do line up real nicely. So putting an arrow, putting our line through them with some arrows, this is indicating that this line represents all the solutions, every single ordered pair that, you know, that will satisfy that equation, graphing, visualization of solutions to an equation. So we're done. So it speeds things up a little bit. It's still point plotting, still a little bit labor intensive, but a little faster than the last round. So let's do it one more time. So 4x plus 3y equals 12, right? So, um, again, we're going to uh, point plot this. So I'll begin organizing myself in a little grid. Uh, we'll begin by finding my x-intercept. By definition, y is equal to 0. So when I plug that into the equation, right, anything times 0 is 0. So we're left with 4x equals 12. Do a quick division, x equals 3. All right, so we end up with 3, 0. Um, not all x-intercepts are 3, 0. I probably should have made a better example, but yeah, it is what it is. All right, so what about a y-intercept? Well, again, by definition, x has to be 0. So when I plug that into the equation, anything times 0 is gone, so we're left with negative 3y equals 12. Divide both sides by negative 3, and we get negative 4. So I now know where my y-intercept is, 0, negative 4. So I have the location we're crossing the x-axis, the location we're crossing the y-axis, 
And now we have to find that third point, and you can use whatever you want. All right, so how about we let x equal negative 3? So when I do that, 4 times negative 3 minus 3y equals 12. This is negative 12 minus 3y equals 12. Add 12 to both sides, and we get negative 3y equals 24. Divide by negative 3, and we get y equals negative 8. And so there's my third data point. So we've generated three data points. Um, we know there's an infinite number of them, but rather than trying to find each one, because there's, there's not enough time to do it, what we'll do is we'll graph the ones that I got. So I'll put a nice little x and y axis together. Right? There's my y axis, there's my x. We're crossing this graph crosses the x axis at 3, 0. So there's that visualization of that data. The y intercept is occurring at 0, negative 4. And again, you can already start to see things line up. But if I can get a third point to line up, I know I've got it right. So this uh, next point, x is equal to negative 3. And y is equal to, there's negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, and 3. And lo and behold, you'll notice the data lines right up. So what's the graph? What are the solutions to the equation? 4x minus 3y equals 12. Well, all the solutions line up along that graph. A visualization of the solution points to an equation. And so that's how we can do some point plotting with our x-intercepts. Again, still a little labor intensive, but it shortens things up by letting x equal 0 or letting y equal to 0, x-intercept, y-intercept. You still got to find that third point, though. All right, so hopefully that gets you guys rolling. Um, we'll continue to move forward. There is easier ways to graph lines, but we got to kind of build that uh, foundation to get there. Right now, you guys should be point plotting. I'll see you guys in the next video. Well done. Email me with questions. Ask them on Canvas. All right, or ask for a Google Meet session if you need more help.